Good morning and welcome everybody to our service this morning. Um, I was a bit late here this morning, I was rushing around at home getting some things sorted. And um, last, last week we were talking about patience, weren't we, and uh, waiting. Um, so not comparing myself to... <laughs> I'm getting messages saying, where are you? Um, but yeah, you are most welcome, whether you are joining us here, whether you are joining us at home, uh, and whether you're joining us later on in the day watching this on, uh, on YouTube perhaps. Um, quick introductions again, just in case, because you never know when somebody's uh, here for the first time. I'm Phil. We've got Carolyn, Yvonne, Andrew sitting behind the camera. I won't show you him. Um, and, and you, um, and you, you are all very much a part of our service this morning. Um, we are going to have a reading later on, uh, which is going to be from 1 Samuel chapter 3. So if you have your Bibles or your phones or whatever at home, you can look up 1 Samuel chapter 3 and have that, that ready. Um, but we're going to start with um, a couple of songs. We've got Open the Eyes, My Heart, and Into Your Hands. Thank you. 
Just a reminder that the Bible reading this morning is from 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. The Lord calls Samuel. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night... Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. And the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. 
the Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Hello everyone, and it's really good to be with you all again. A belated Happy New Year, and my prayers for continued hope as the weeks go by. It's safe to say we're living in very perilous times. Not only are we still fighting coronavirus, a year after we were first hearing about it on the news, but we now find ourselves in the most dangerous situation economically. With so many businesses closed, many of which will never reopen, the news that over 800,000 people were made redundant last year and it's highly likely many more will follow this year, and with our children missing out on so much of their education, there seems no end to the destruction of much of the fabric of our society. Even the most faithful of you, those with the strongest faith, wouldn't be blamed for thinking, God, where are you in all of this? They may have been different circumstances, and yet there are distinct similarities as the first book of Samuel, chapter 3, begins with the words, in those days. Those times were perilous in all sorts of ways, including politically, socially and morally which also points to them being economically difficult as well. Just for a bit of background, we only need to rewind to chapter 2 and verse 12. The sons of Eli were scoundrels. <laughs> well, that says it all, doesn't it? We're told they paid no attention to the Lord or to the regulations concerning what the priests could demand from the people. Instead, when anyone was offering a sacrifice, the priest's servant would come with a three-pronged fork. While the meat was still cooking, he would stick the fork into the cooking pot and whatever the fork brought out belonged to the priest. This sin of the sons of Eli was extremely serious in the Lord's sight because they treated the offerings to the Lord with such disrespect. Later in the chapter, we learn that God sent a prophet to speak to Eli on his behalf, saying, Why, Eli, do you honour your sons more than me by letting them fatten themselves on the best parts of all the sacrifices my people offered to me? I don't know about you, but even in this one sentence, I can hear God's pain at what his servant has so obviously turned a blind eye to. Although God definitely speaks to Samuel at this point, the story tells us that the word of the Lord was rare, there were not many visions. This shows that beyond the misdemeanours of Eli's sons, there was a distinct lack of faith in God amongst his people. The priests and all those who worked in the tabernacle for them were influential in the land. If the general public had lost faith in God's representatives, then it wouldn't take much for them to lose their trust in God. With a nation seemingly at rock bottom, God began to show his hand. Not with a heavy fist, not with the kind of sweep that would knock everything off the table, not with a signal to advance a mighty army. No, God's way was a gentle nudge in the middle of the night. I get the impression that it had always been God's plan to do something special with Samuel. When all said and done, his birth was the miracle his mum had prayed for, and her response to this priceless gift was not to hold on to it tightly, but to let it go for God's purposes. As she had pleaded before the Lord, Hannah said, If you give me a son, I promise that I will dedicate him to you for his whole life. She was a woman of her word, though it must have caused her a great deal of heartache to hand over her only child to live within these holy precincts. Her willingness to carry out her promise to the letter was God's opportunity to turn the tide for his people once more. In the deep darkness just before dawn, the Lord spoke to Samuel, disturbing his sleep and setting this young lad up for the mission that would mark his life. 
It's a story that reminds us that God has the knack of choosing his right person for the job when, if we're asked, we'd say, no way. God chose Moses, a man who committed murder, a man who had a speech impediment, to go and plead his case before Pharaoh. God chose Elijah, who was quick to moan and always fearful for his own life, to prove to King Ahab that Yahweh was far greater than any of the gods of Baal. God chose Esther to charm a king to save his holy nation. God chose Elizabeth, a woman beyond childbearing age, to give birth to the one who would point the way for Jesus. God is no respecter of gender or age. He looks for the right person for a particular job at a specific time. So watch out, it could be you next. Samuel's lack of age and experience took him to Eli. Why wouldn't it? Although it took Eli a little while to catch the drift himself, finally he recognised there was something going on. He'd not been on God's wavelength for a long time, but now something was stirring within him. I want to believe that stirring was excitement, but my feeling is it was at least tinged with dread. I'm certain most, if not all of you, will have known this story from childhood. The thing is though, like we did today, we often stop reading at verse 10, when Samuel does as Eli instructs him and says to God, speak for your servant is listening. What does God say to the young lad? Sadly, and probably frighteningly, it's not good news. Verse 11 continues, and the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God and he failed to restrain them. Ouch! That would have been hard for an adult to hear. What must it have meant to this child? Nevertheless, when Eli asked him about his encounter with God, Samuel told him the truth, and Eli accepted this tough word from the Lord. God carried through what he had said to Samuel, and his actions brought people back to God. The chapter ends, the Lord continued to reveal himself at Shiloh, where he had appeared to Samuel and had spoken to him. And when Samuel spoke, all Israel listened. At the moment, we're regularly seeing our politicians held to account for their actions during this crisis. In America, in particular, we're seeing a man given great responsibility, failing his people, and that breakdown in trust is destroying their nationhood. There has never been a time when it's been right for people in power or who have authority to act immorally. In other words, to go against God's ways. And there never will be a time. Equally, the same must apply to us too. As the people of God, we are constantly bound by his laws and must always live our lives his way even if that goes against the ideas or ways of family, friends and neighbours. Eli tolerated the sins of his sons when he should have been challenging their commitment to God. We tolerate evil at our peril and stand accountable to our God. The first few verses of 1 Samuel chapter 3 are sweet. The remaining verses of the chapter become very sour, but through it all, God is in control and has his way. For all of us who thought life was sweet, we've had to learn to cope with the sourness of these last many months. But for all that, God is still in control. He will have his way. He loves us faithfully and it's always his will to bless his children. We may have felt there's been a silence in heaven, but 
May we continue to be people who listen out for God's voice and act in his will to his praise and glory. And so please join me in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you that you speak in every generation, choosing those you know are ready and willing to do your will. We pray that we will always listen out for and acknowledge your voice as we are committed to being your servants. Help us to be strong in our faith, to stand up for you and your ways, so that the example we show within our communities will be yours and yours alone. We ask for your continued blessing upon us as we navigate these difficult times and pray that we will see you at work as the light of your love shines upon us. Amen. Okay, we're going to continue in a time of prayer. The prayer that I've chosen today is the one that's been released this week by the Baptist Union. And I thought it would be nice if we all shared that same prayer this week. I'll give you a little bit of time in between each section just to reflect on those words. So let's pray. So Lord, we come to you waiting to listen. May you find the strength and resolve to continue in the face of all that is being asked of you. When you've done your best and given all that you can, may you be assured that this is all that could have been required. When you are confronted by the unreasonableness of some, may you constantly be reminded that many, many others appreciate your endeavours more than words can say. When messages of hope and comfort are required of you, May you be granted the words and wisdom that you need. When you feel broken and drained, may you be held fast in the midst of your struggle. And when you simply cannot respond to all the needs that confront you, may your mind dwell on what you have accomplished and not what you have had to leave undone. So may you find the peace and stillness of heart to rest and recover when your labours subside. And may our prayers and concern be as unrelenting as the demands that we are all facing. Amen continue in the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. says on my little sheet here, Phil, bye. So we are drawing towards the end of our, our service and in a minute we're going to sing Here I Am, Majesty. But I just thought I'd check in, see how the New Year's resolutions are going. Um, if you're still watching online, type it in, let us know how your New, new Year's resolutions are going. One of mine was to ex make sure I exercise outdoors, because it's the getting outdoors that's the really important bit for me, um, you know, averaging three times a week. So, all I need to do is go and exercise six times today, and I'm still on course for the first couple of weeks in January. It's not been, not been brilliant. But one of my other ones was that uh, in lockdown one, I downloaded, I, I, I joined Audible, you know, the sort of audio books site. They were doing a free offer for a bit and gave you a free ticket so you could download a book. And me being generally wanting to make the most of my money, I thought, right, what's the longest possible book? What's the most hours on Audible that I can get the best value for money for? And one of the things was the Bible in one year, read by David Suchet, you know, Poirot. Um, there was hours and hours on there. I thought, brilliant, that's really good value, and it's something that'll be good for me. I struggled to complete it in lockdown one because it was going from January the 1st to the 2nd etc so I thought oh well I'll restart it again and I'm pleased to say so far I'm keeping going with it and it links to the reading and the, the talk from today because as, as, a, as a child and as Vanessa said you know it was one of those things that you stories that you might have heard as a child and it's one of those things that like oh wow yeah I remember that story and I can remember as a child hearing that and thinking, oh, wow, wouldn't it be great if God actually spoke to me so I actually knew it was him, his vo an audi audible voice. Now, look, that hasn't happened. But we talked about last week in terms of sort of waiting and, and recognising when, when God is there and when he's saying something. And, and part of that is surely is knowing what God is like, understanding his character and his person. And you do have to do more than come along or watch on a on a Sunday morning to soak to soak that up so the other point is would I want to hear it and that is a that's a genuine question and challenge isn't it what what you know what would God say if he could speak to you audibly what would he say and would you want to hear it and what would you do with what you heard so yeah sorry that didn't mean to be an extra talk there um I am saying goodbye um, I'll come back to do a blessing in a minute, but we are going to sing the song, Here I Am, Majesty. And this is, this is the bit, this is for, like Samuel, isn't it? Here, here I am. Lord, by your grace, I hear you, I listen to you, and I praise you.
now for the blessing which I've pinched from somewhere else. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are they that have been persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. May you be blessed as you go from here, as you go about your day. Thank you for joining us this morning.